Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we are back with a brand new season of Death Battle. Yep, they are finally back. Today, it's Sam versus Veltramite with Omni Van taking on Bardock. Yep, Invincible's dad taking on Goku's dad. Battle of the Super Dads, I guess you want to call it. <laughs> I can't wait. So, so we, shall we see which dad wins? Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. This battle is sponsored by Manscaped. Ooh, let's go. Oh, wow. I think you're already. Heads up. Wow. Omni-Man versus Bardock. The ostracized Viltramite and the Doomed Saiyan. He's Wiz Ooh. and Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win, win a, a death, death battle. battle. All right, let's go. Omni-Man. Earth's once greatest hero. Alongside the guardians of the globe, he protected the world from all manner of threats. And then, in a single day, it all went horribly wrong. Why, Omni-Man? How, Omni-Man? Who, Omni-Man? Who, indeed. Champion of Earth, best-selling author, J.K. Simmons, yet it was all a charade. With Pretty his much. murderous rampage only brought to a halt thanks to his own son. It all starts with his home planet, Viltrum. Which I hear is a mm -hmm. totally lovely utopia through brutal mortal combat yeah. with a K. Or wait, no, that came later. Viltrumites are among <laughs> the most powerful beings in the universe, even more so after they oh. purged the weaker members of their species. As a vanguard of the Viltrumite Empire, Omni Man infiltrated Earth it's as happened. Nolan Grayson, expected to prepare the planet for Imperial assimilation. Which should have been easy. Yeah, basically. Two was pretty much a spy sent by them. Like, this is going to be interesting to say the least. Oi, anyway. Since he's got your classic strongman superpowers and mm -hmm. he's basically invulnerable, easily knocking around asteroids the size of Texas. He can fly at unbelievable speeds, soaring from Earth to the planet Thraxa in under one week. Thraxa under is, week. quote, a couple galaxies away, give or take. So a minimum of two galaxies. Beyond the Milky Way's neighbor Andromeda is the lesser known Triangulum Galaxy, which That's is over 2.7 million light years away. Reaching it in under one week means Omni Man must have flown over 142 million times faster than light. Oh, and Viltrumites can't breathe in space, so he held his breath the whole way. And it's not like he was in a rush, he was on a soul searching trip, contemplating the significance For of smashing his own Damn. son's face in. Think. Nolan, think. Yeah, this is why I'm never having kids. You're missing out. But well, according to another wait, Viltrumite, Thetis, a bunch of other Viltrumites huh. who actually were in a hurry flew to Viltrum across the Virgo supercluster in less oh. than 24 hours. That's over 20 billion times faster than light. They don't really need to rush anyway. The older a Viltrumite gets, the slower they age. According to the Invincible Handbook, wait, Nolan is over 2,000 years old. And regardless of age, Viltrumites don't suffer muscle fatigue like humans do, so they rarely ever tire out. Seriously? He's got parenting easy mode on, and he couldn't even handle that. I would have killed for that back when my daughter was born. Well, you would have to be a Viltrumite first. A Viltrumite's body contains smart atoms, which they subconsciously manipulate. This cellular structure can effectively recall certain states of being regardless of their present environment, reacting to changes at an atomic level to perform the impossible. Yeah, like surviving your intestines. It's getting ripped out, or even Ooh. more scary, ripping out your whole beard all at once. <laughs> yep. Only a Viltrumite could pull off something that disturbing. Nolan yep. is incredibly tough, but if he faces superior forces, his smart atoms can adjust to make him even stronger by comparison. This is why Viltrumites are considered in... Yeah, invincible. Most weapons in the universe can't even scratch a Viltrumite like him. Sure. Even a ship's Puzzle. cannon like this one can't take down a Viltrumite, and it obliterated a massive solar disk nearly half the size of a star. Speaking Shit. of planets, he's strong enough to shatter one by flying straight through it. A planet so big it has a whole ring around it. The Roche limit factor yeah, dictates the size a celestial body must be in order to disperse orbiting material as a ring. In short, an Earth-sized planet can't support such a ring, meaning this one must be much larger. Whoa. And don't get me started on how the ring is actually made up of dead bodies, because, uh, spoilers, yeah. just go read the comic. If Roche isn't doing it for you, this planet also supports five moons in its orbit, and even the smallest is a perfect sphere, meaning its own gravity shaped it. At Ow. minimum, a moon like that must have a diameter of 600 kilometers, or 370 miles. 
Comparing this to the planet's diameter, we can tell this world is nearly 14 times larger than Earth. Or it was yeah. before, you know, kablam. Now, yeah, yeah. Omni-Man oh. does have his weaknesses. Monsters like Rognars can pierce Viltrumite flesh, and he's extremely sensitive to a specific high-pitched frequency, which can destabilize his body's equilibrium. But his real weakness turned out to be, you guessed it, fatherhood. Thanks to his son, Mark, Nolan began to re-examine his perspective and his place in the universe. He settled down in a new place, got himself a new job, and even had a new kid with his new wife. Who's a bug? The bug lady? Uh, uh, he banged a bug. Why, Omni-Man? How, Omni-Man? Hey, everyone deals with parenting stress in their own way. When Nolan was lecturing to Mark about how insignificant people are, Mark wasn't the only one he was trying to convince, if you catch my drift. Yeah. Nolan Grayson's oh. real mission isn't planetary conquest or saving the innocent. It's to discover if a violent man who can break the world can also be a good father. Godspeed, Omni-Man. Good luck. Also, I guess we're not doing the animation stuff for the guys. No. Or I guess they wanted to save the budget. I mean, they are working on Kickstarter, so maybe that's why? At least that's how I see it. Or maybe they're just not a fan of it. I mean, a fresh start, I guess. So there's Omni, man. It's a pretty interesting power set, but then again, we knew most of that. It's considering the uh, Homelander fight. But now, we'll see what Bardock brings to the table. I'm curious what they're going to consider canon. In the far reaches of the cosmos, laid a world with a people like no other. Born and raised the to Saiyans. do just one thing. For what? The Saiyans! A proud warrior people from the planet Vegeta, ruled by... King the Vegeta! King Vegeta! Well, Narcissus Punch! Exactly. Pretty much! Their pride blinded them to the truth of their impending doom. But perhaps one Saiyan Not represents much. the best of them, even during their waning glory days. Bardock! He's cool, he's crude, he's got a bad attitude, and if he goes apeshit, you're totally screwed! And, and guess what? It's he's a daddy! Father of Goku! Oh wow, I never would have guessed. Right? What a curveball. So what mm -hmm. does that make Turles? Who? Ahem. Bardock oh, was a cold-blooded killer. I love you, Turles. Conquering planets counts. in service to the Saiyan's true overseer, Lord Frieza. Frieza. They didn't just conquer planets, they wiped out every living thing, leaving Frieza uninhabited well, rocks to dope. sell away. Bardock was an asshole. Well, it, until he wasn't. Bardock's story has evolved dub? over uh -huh. the years, with multiple iterations to draw from. Including one where he's a brilliant scientist. Sci yeah. <laughs> Well, I one I'm is considered officially canon. Bardock's demeanor oh, so began cool. to shift when he met and eventually married oh, fellow warrior Gine and had two sons, Raditz and Kakarot. No, Bardock didn't go totally soft. He was still a ruthless warrior. You know that iconic red headband of his? It's stained with the blood of his fallen friends. Hardcore! Bardock could fly, move faster than light, and was naturally adept in using his key as an explosive weapon. AKA shooting lasers Bobby. from his hands! True to his brutal screw you nature, Bardock's yeah, moves are all about spear, overwhelming fly, power. His spear final cannon. spirit cannon is like a key powered bazooka. His rebellion hammer punch ignites enemies on Ooh. contact, and his rebellion spear basically turns him into a supercharged battering ram. The yep. guy has no chill. He will run you over, oh. break your spine, light you on fire, and then and move on to the next guy. Oh, Pretty much. A day's work for a Saiyan. Marriage didn't change that. While Bardock cared for Gine, in fact being one of few Saiyans of his time to actually have a romantic partner, he was still no family man. Like most Saiyans, he saw his sons as nothing more than future soldiers. Bardock was a low-class yes. warrior, so it was unlikely his kids would grow up to be anything more than battlefield fodder. But they would still That's possess the Saiyan's field, but, power, no. a transformation that was the key to their planetary devastation. Oh, yeah. Funky. Yep, the great Uzaru. Under the light of a full moon, a Saiyan with a tail manifests the Uzaru. This great ape form increases Bardock's power tenfold, turning him into an unstoppable kaiju. Quick, 
Someone call Yajirobe! While some Saiyans can maintain control over this berserker form, low-class warriors like Bardock don't receive the same level of training as those of higher birth. Prince Vegeta's control is so precise he can speak while changed, but Bardock cannot. Hell, it's questionable if he even remembers everything that happens when he goes full tilt gorilla. The Saiyan strategy is pretty much just monkey see, monkey smash. Yep. Despite being <laughs> monkey low smash. class, Bardock's power level nearly matched that of King Vegeta, who could destroy really? multiple planets at once. At about this time, King Vegeta's power level was around 10,000. Yeah, we know power levels are kind of janky. Nobody can agree on what the number really means. Outside of his fight with Gas, Bardock doesn't really show any high-end feats in canon, but we can use power levels to compare him to other characters with similar levels to better understand his potential. Like when his son fought Prince Vegeta. What's the scouter say about his power level? It's over! over. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah Translation again. Changed it to fit Vegeta's lip flaps, but we only cover the cold hard truth, damn it. According Fair to enough. this movie pamphlet, Goku's power level between his fight with Vegeta and his trip to Namek was 10,000. Mm -hmm. This lines up with that previous reading and puts him on par with Bardock. Goku's training during the trip eventually raised him to 90,000 upon arrival, but this gives us a clear window. Yeah, mm -hmm. early in the trip, he had to dodge a bunch of incoming asteroids and blast his ship away from a star, which is impressive considering the speed involved. The planet Namek is outside oh, yeah. Earth's quadrant of the universe, and it took his ship six days to make the journey. Traveling a quarter of the universe's diameter would put the ship over 9.5 trillion times the speed of light. And Goku That's would have had to keep up with that kind of speed to do all that other stuff. Makes sense, given far weaker characters could reach the moon in a fraction of a second. Shouldn't be trivial enough for Bardock. All this speed and power. Remember, this was before Goku was around. You know, like you have to admit, this is pretty nuts. You know. Okay, just put it like this. One of the high like power levels that we know were after Bardock. So back then, Frieza was pretty much the king, but Goku pretty much just swept that one out of there. And more people in the kiss came out and just basically power scaled it. <laughs> anyway. Power meant when Bardock and his team assaulted the planet Serial, they went, Cheerio! Bardock ravaged the planet, yep. annihilating its people until he found two survivors, a mother oh. and her child. Some may call it weakness, others a moment of clarity, but Bardock was suddenly reminded of his wife and recently born son. He chose to spare the two and even pushed himself far past his limits to protect them from his own Frieza Force allies, Damn. who taunted that Frieza had dire plans for the Saiyan's future. Oh, right. This moment changed Bardock, making him more appreciative of his family and cautious of Frieza. When all the Saiyans were yes. called back to planet Vegeta for mysterious reasons, he had a hunch something was up. So before his final stand, smashing through hundreds of soldiers before coming face to face with the tyrant, he sent his youngest kid away for protection. A choice that allowed his son to thrive. And hey, that's what good parents do. A choice that well, would have originally greater conquest, significance right? than Bardock could ever imagine. And then Dildo Dickhead blew them all up and he died. Not so much. Or did he? Bardock got killed so freaking hard he got blasted back in time. Actually, he was pulled away by these two who miscalculated and misplaced yeah. him incorrectly in the time stream. Blah, 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 non canon. Yeah, whatever. he's still alive. He survived. And when he realized what happened, he got so unbelievably pissed off, he went Super Saiyan. What? All right, this is very much an alternate universe what if scenario, and it is jarring. But think about it True. the Super Saiyan form is not achieved through training alone, it requires dedication, introspection victory, failure, love, and loss. Frieza destroyed the Saiyans because he feared the possibility of the Super Saiyan, a Saiyan with power that could rival his own. But perhaps Bardock's transformation was more than simply a what if. He had begun to take the very steps his son later would to achieve the form. Perhaps if Frieza had hesitated, even for a moment, his fear would have manifested before him right then and there. Damn, pour one out for Bardock, who figured out how to be the truest Saiyan right at the end of it all. I know Kakarot would be proud. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, there's a lot going on, and frankly, oh boy. <laughs> well, you guys know the drill. Gotta get to the next battle, so... Hope you're ready. Let's see which one wins. Will it be Omnan or Bardock? I'm actually kind of curious, so... Might guess Bardock, but who knows? They might bring in the Super Saiyan, so we'll see. All right, Here we the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's, it's time, time for, for a death, death battle! battle! Let's go. Oh, 
Vegeta? Oh, did not. Never mind. Get Wrong planet. My bad. Here we go. Uh, ow. Great. Another gross bug planet. Oh, fine. Good. This planet isn't anyone's Ooh. to conquer. Don't underestimate me, mate. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa. The engine's take. Just like my son, sticking his nose in places he's not ready to. <laughs> my Come on. son would kick his ass. <laughs> I'm gonna take his ass. That sounds better than yours, son. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, someone tells me brute force ain't gonna be the only thing that's gonna stop Island in there, but we'll see. Oh! There goes your heart. Oh! <laughs> really? Ah. Ow. Oh, he's gonna do think. Here we go. Whatever you are. You're an embarrassment. Uh oh. Wait till you see the real power of a Saiyan. Woohoo! I'm sorry, he's out. Am I supposed to be impressed? Might be soon. Heads up. Man, Cole is really getting <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh, tail nearly got him. Like, hello. And oops. Uh, that's a bonus. Heads up! <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's a hit by his own tail. <laughs> Got him head, that's supposed to be kind of funny. <laughs> oh, boy. No. Like this. My sons. Leave me. I won't let you take me from my world. Whoa! Here we go! Super Saiyan mode! Uh oh! Come on, Flash! Here we go! Your time is up! Uh oh. Oh, looks like Bark's not able to fight. If you sit, Saiyan, remember it. I had a feeling. Looks like Bark wasn't able to overpower him. Which, honestly, with Smart Adams, not surprised. Fuck. Yep, whoops. KO! Hi, Bardo. Okay, these Gokus have got to stop picking fights with guys in capes. Pitting Pretty Saiyan much. against Viltrumite is fascinating. Among mm -hmm. the many similarities, five specific categories stand out. Oh. Starting with speed. Bardock is much faster, given his power level match Goku dodging yeah. asteroids at 9.5 trillion times light speed, much higher than the Viltrumite's oh, fastest shift? speed. Add on the 50 times oh, multiplier from Super Saiyan, and it's a huge difference. Right, Bardock clearly okay, has the speed, speed advantage, but strength and durability yeah. are another story. Though it doesn't seem like it at first, Bardock scales to King Veggie, who wrecked three planets Listen. at once, and Omni-Man only smashed one. But given uh, how big that one big planet was, yeah. the numbers are actually pretty similar. Until we factor in the Super Saiyan boost, right? Well, there's a catch. A major plot point in Invincible involves the coalition of planets admitting that their weapons cannot hurt Viltrumites. So, when their ship's cannon obliterated this gigantic solar disk, it highlighted just how 
how tough the Viltrumites really are. This disc completely blocked the sunlight and heat between a planet and its star. And this is no ordinary planet. Oh, its yeah, size and density them. are so high that its inhabitants are as strong as Viltrumites just due to living in its natural gravity. To fully block the light to such a planet and remain in consistent orbit, the disk would need to be positioned at its L1 point, the spot that creates oh. an uninterrupted view between sun and satellite, and the disk itself must be about half the diameter of the star in question. Ow. This means the scaling of the disk puts it at 3 septillion tons. That's Whoa. 24 zeros! Which makes Omni-Man yep, over 11,000 times than stronger that. than base Bardock. Not even the tons, or not Super even Saiyan close. forms could make up that difference. So, so strength goes to Nolan. Mm -hmm. Still, numbers aren't everything. As far as versatility in combat goes, neither had one distinct advantage that could win outright. Omni-Man survives in space for much longer, but Bardock barely squeaks out the edge here thanks to his ranged versatility with key attacks okay, so and, of course, Super first... Saiyan. Okay, let's address the Super Saiyan Bardock thing. It's mm -hmm. perfectly fair to question whether or not the form should be in this comparison at all. However, even with the form included, Nolan still takes this, oh. especially when it comes to our last two categories, Experience, experience yeah. and stamina. Yep, Omni Man's been around a lot longer than Bardock, over so, 2,000 yeah, 2, years. years. And mm. even with Super Saiyan, Bardock's no master of the form. And without that mastery, the Ooh, form drains so the user's energies at an increased rate. Which brings us to what may be Omni Man's most surprising advantage those weird smart oh, atoms. Yeah. Saiyans like Bardock can fight for days on end, but only for so long. Bardock possesses a limited pool of ki, which only depletes faster when using super forms like the Great Ape. In Ooh. contrast, Omni-Man's biology prevents him from limited? tiring in most I've cases, it, letting him but, travel across yeah. whole galaxies for weeks like non-stop, and his smart atoms Omni adjust to counter whatever arm. physical strain he's subjected See? to. Bardock's hmm? crazy speed and power yeah, the, made him a the, real the challenge, but Nolan's strength, experience, and sheer it. endurance presented an unstoppable and unshakable force that would inevitably land the killing mm -hmm. blow. When push came to shove, Omni Man raised the bar, Duck. The Ouch. winner is Omni Man. Omni -Man. Next time on oh, Death Metal. Ooh. Okay, join on, Joe. Ooh. Dang. Subscribe and join. Dang. Persona versus Stand. We're finally getting to that battle. <laughs> I mean, we always compare the two similarly, you know. Both are invisible to others, unless they're the fellow Persona or Stand user. You can't... And when they get hit, the, the wielder also feels it. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, I feel like it's gonna be Giorno winning. You know, considering that little, uh, you know, never reaching the end goal. Or, I mean, the automatic counter, but you get the idea. And never really ending up in death, when you think of it like that, you know? I mean, unless Joe... I mean, then again, Joker has a lot of Personas, since, you know... Wild card and all, but yeah, I think I can already tell this one's gonna be a stomp in Jorno's favor, but mm, I'd be surprised. We'll have to wait. Don't know when, but like I said, keep an eye out. See you guys next month. Till then, hope you enjoy the battle. Good night.